reality is non-dual, which means that all boundaries, all categories, and all distinctions ultimately collapse. They're all relative. There is no distinction between inside, outside, physical, non-physical, me, other, good, bad, black, white, human, non-human, living, non-living, organic, inorganic, scientific versus religious. So all of these dualities, all of these will ultimately collapse. They don't hold. If you follow them all the way, uh, this is a super profound truth, and this one principle can help you to cut through so much bullshit and to see how the mind constructs all these categories and distinctions. Very, very helpful. To see how most of the things you were taught as a child all the way up through university have just been categories that were constructed by the human mind, by the human race, and that many of these distinctions are purely conceptual, uh, they're not absolute in any sense, and that they will ultimately all collapse as you keep observing deeper and deeper, keep meditating, keep contemplating, keep uh, having mystical experiences, all of this will ultimately collapse into one unity, one ultimate absolute truth, which leads us to the next core principle, which is that absolute truth exists, but it cannot be thought, believed, imagined, communicated, spoken, written, proven, or argued. Uh, this is very difficult for most people to accept, <clears throat> especially many scientifically minded, rationally minded people. They tend to assume that if absolute truth does exist, then it must be possible to prove it or argue it or communicate it or write about it or imagine it or think about it. But the fact is that it's not because all of those are limited and the absolute truth is unlimited. It's absolute. That's what makes it so interesting and special and important. Uh, so this is just a brute fact of reality. Mm. you can go test it for yourself. And if you discover the absolute truth, what I'm claiming is that if you do the practices, one day you will discover the absolute truth. And once you do, you will realize that it cannot be thought, believed, imagined, communicated, spoken, written, proven, or argued. And yet you will know about it uh, more certainly than you know anything else in the world. How is that possible? Well, it can't really be explained or imagined or communicated, but it is possible through mystical experience, through lots of observation. Again, that's, that's very important. It's super important principle because a lot of people get stuck arguing and trying to communicate and imagine and think about absolute truth. And you need to just know right off the bat that that's just not possible. So stop wasting your time doing that. You waste a lot of time doing that. You waste years and decades doing that. Just stop it. Your life will go a lot better. Another core principle is that reality is not material. Reality is not a physical object of any kind. Reality is a giant mind. Everything you think is physical, like walls, roads, cars, planets, solar systems, it's all one mind. These are all imaginings within a mindscape. And there is nothing outside of mindscape. Mindscape is all that there ever is. And again, this is not something you believe. This is something that you experience through direct observation. Lots and lots and lots of observation. Psychedelics help a lot as well. Uh, the next closely related principle is that life is a dream. And I have a whole episode called Life is a Dream where I explain this, but it just basically is what it sounds like. Life is literally a dream. What you have here is just a dream. There is no external world beyond this dream that you're in. It's a dream just like the dreams you have when you're asleep at night. And just like those, it's possible to awaken from the dream so you can awaken from life. This is a super important principle because it helps you to disidentify from all of your attachments that you have to this dream. You start taking the dream less seriously. And that's very important for living the good life. 
To live the good life, you must awaken from the dream. Otherwise, you're always going to be haunted by this dream and the stuff that happens within it. In the same way that, you know, a nightmare terrifies you only because you're not aware that you're inside of a dream. But once you realize that it's just a dream, the nightmare is no longer uh, a big deal. And ditto here. The next core principle is that reality is infinite and that God is a real thing. Not the Christian God sitting up in the clouds with a beard judging you, but um, the word God points to something that's very real. It points to infinity. And just what that is and how it works, that's complicated. I won't get into that here. It's also very controversial. It's also much misunderstood with many traps. Uh, this is also the same as talking about the absolute. So you can see that there's a problem talking about or communicating about it because it's the absolute. But I have I have episodes. I have a two-part series called... Uh, what's it called? It's called um, Understanding Absolute Infinity, part one and two. Go check that out. That explains a lot of what infinity means and how reality could be infinite and what God is. And I'll have future episodes about uh, what God is explaining that. Uh, the next very important principle is that you are God. So God is not something separate from you. Literally, you are God. Not in the egotistical sense that you are a God and you can do anything you want in the world and you can be an asshole and be arrogant. Not, not that way. <laughs> I mean, literally, you created yourself. You created the entire universe. You are the entire universe. This is a very advanced mystical insight that you will only get from uh, years and years of meditation and spiritual practice. But you can get there. And it's very important that you do realize that you are God. Because only then will you take full responsibility for your life. And only then will you really understand how profound life is and what existence is. A uh, closely related follow-up principle to this is that God is the devil. There is absolutely no difference between God and the devil. They are the same thing because, again, what non-duality tells us is that every duality, including the duality between God and devil, is uh, ultimately going to collapse into a unity. So God and the devil must collapse into a unity, which tells you, you know, what's the, what's the value of knowing that God is the devil? Well, the value of it is, is that you stop seeing evil and being bothered by evil so much because you realize that all the evil you see out there, there's a higher intelligence behind it. It exists for a reason. It's part of infinity. It's part of all the stuff that you need to love and to embrace. And also, calling it the devil, the reason understanding the devil is so important, by the way, I have a whole episode about what is the devil. Really good episode. Go check that one out. I think it's one of my best ones. Um, it will change your whole understanding of this, this, this duality. Is that you know, um, you need to understand selfishness. You need to understand where evil comes from. You need to understand why reality is so deceptive. You need to understand Maya, in other words. And you need to understand that this is part of God. God is the one deceptive motherfucker. And in fact, that's how Reality comes into existence is through various forms of deception. And that's why we say it's all one mind, it's all a dream. And so one aspect of this dream is that it's very hypnotic and it's very self-deceptive and it's very twisted and um, it can be very um, neurotic and pathological at times. That's all part of the entire whole. That's not something to cut out and to ignore. That's something to understand and to embrace. Otherwise, you you will actually be yourself pathological by denying those aspects of reality. Another very important principle is that all identity is relative and fluid. So literally, there is no identity within reality other than oneness. So any limited identities that you create, like you as a body, you as a biological organism, you as somebody who was born to certain parents, or maybe you identify with your car, or you identify with your house, or you identify with your job, all of these identities that you have, they're all relative. They're all constructions of your mind. They're not absolutely true. And they're fluid, and they can change. And in fact, they have been changing for all of your life. 